So the S&P 500 finally broke out of the range bound price action that we had. If you remember this range from last week, and also if you remember in the last week video uh, that we posted, I was looking for a breakout above this range so I could long uh, for potential of all-time high plus. So I was looking for above 563.59. That didn't end up happening. You can see here we had an immediate gap down on Tuesday. Not only was it a gap down, it was a gap down to fall back under the macro uptrend, this blue line right here. And the reason this is relevant uh, to the current market structure is because it goes all the way back down to the low that formed on October 27th of last year, connects to the low from over here between April and May. And you can see we finally reclaimed it after breaking down below during the early August fiasco, if you remember the volatility spike, finally reclaimed it, had consolidation, but then it broke down back below again. So not only did that happen, it also broke down below the range, like I said, that I was referring to in the last video. And because it broke down below here, there was no long setup above since we never broke out above, no confirmation, no hourly confirmation, no daily confirmation, just rejected immediately, just complete change. The market basically said, screw your plan. Plans, uh, to me and in this case fell straight down daily candle confirmation below the range in this case and after that as you can see the inverse happened when we had this confirmation below it just continued to fall throughout the rest of the week so a couple things I want to talk about today first of all when you have a distribution breakdown like this and the reason I know is a distribution breakdown is because when you have consolidation and it breaks down below the range that's what you consider to be a distribution breakdown all of this multi-week consolidative price action acts as distribution and we had that breakdown continuation. Typically when you see that, that is a precursor to an extension to the downside. So we have had some type of an extension so far. However, this over here, this circle between 535 roughly to 537 will literally decide if we make a new low or not. That may sound like a very bold statement because it is, but the reason I say that is because both this range here and this range over here on QQQ, roughly around 444 to 450-ish, this area is so supportive that if it's lost, we will, again, likely see a new low form because this is just so crucial that bulls are able to hold around here. Now, why is it crucial? Well, I'll show you a couple examples. First of all, we have a known supply zone, a previous supply zone that is, from over here at this previous all-time high. It's very difficult to get above, led to a pullback as we saw from over here, finally was able to get above and then retested as demand after it broke out above and continued a lot higher. This shows its significance. Not only was it a rejection spot before all-time high, it had a long duration before it was finally broke to the upside, which shows its significance. Now over here, we are finally retesting that again. And the only time it broke below as of recently was when it gapped down. So you can see it acted as support immediately upon the retest over here on August 2nd, but then we gapped down the following day over here because of the vol explosion, but then it immediately picked back up. So this is known demand, worked numerous times now, and now we're retesting it yet again. So we know this will act supportive, at least in the short term, once it is retested, so in this week. Now, the second thing I wanna mention is I have a couple levels as well from previous price discovery over here that act as very supportive levels once they're retested. Plus, there also is a key indicator, very basic one, but still very key nonetheless, that is the 200-day moving average, this blue line right here. So that is approaching. Now, I want to show you something that's pretty incredible if you go all the way out, just pan all the way out in the daily. I want you to follow this blue line, the 200. I know I have a lot of levels over here. I have to get rid of it on this chart, but just follow this blue line right here. Follow my cursor. See how far can we get until we're back in a period where it broke below this level. So we go all the way back. Technically, we're below this level, but this is after it broke below. We find over here in January of 2022, that was the last time that the 200 day broke to the downside on the daily chart. You can see back here, specifically January 20th of 2022. And if you remember in 2022, we had a major correction after. Now let's use a ruler tool and go to the point of break over here, all the way down to the low that formed. There is a 30% drawdown below the 200 day the last time that it broke. Now, this is not to say that I'm expecting a breakdown. I actually am not. That's not my base case at all in this case here. That's more so to prove to you that over here, a retest of around this area, again, around 444, because this will continue to go up, 443 maybe, wicks below during the day. This is to show you, this is a very crucial level, just the 200 day by itself. Nothing else that I've now told you about, whether it's pivot-based levels, whether it's the previous supply zone now acting as demand zone, uh, and what I'm about to share on the SP 100, 
take all of that out of the equation. The 200 day is so significant that a retest of it, you'd expect there to be at the very least in the short term, some type of a substantial fight between bulls and bears because of how critical it is that it holds. Otherwise, if you break below it, we saw what happened before. It doesn't mean that there has to be a 30% drawdown before in this case, but the last time it broke below, it stayed below for a very long time and dropped quite a bit as well. So that just shows the significance of something like the 200-day. We saw an immediate bounce last time it was retested. Didn't waste any time getting back above. Uh, but then over here, looks like it's kind of acting as a magnet now. It's likely to be retested soon. And personally, I'm looking to long around this area because I know that if it does break and we see a breach of the 200-day, then there's going to be a lot more downside to come. So I'm willing to take that bet run the lower end over here. Hey guys, we wanted to take a minute and talk about our sponsor for today, Moomoo. With AI related stocks being in the spotlight this year and making some big gains, you need to make sure you have a reliable broker on your side. For option traders looking to maximize returns, Moomoo's option screener could help. Unlike other platforms, Moomoo not only screens option contracts to help your search, but also provides in-depth analysis on Greeks, probabilities, and volatility. This helps you assess potential profits and risks before making a move. Furthermore, Moomoo provides another level of data, such as earnings transcripts for your favorite stocks, summarized by their AI, analyst rating reports, and much more. This allows you to make informed decisions without having to spend time digging through extensive reports. If you're a new user, sign up using our link and make a deposit to receive up to 15 free stocks along with an 8.1% limited time APY on idle cash and a transfer in bonus of up to $300. Don't miss out on these rewards. Terms and conditions apply. Now, last thing, I also have a green range over here, pretty big range, uh, but it goes roughly between 444 to 470. Now, this is a new range that I believe will trade within for at least the rest of the month. And basically, we have the lower end over here acting as support because of the variety of reasons I just shared in this video for this to act as support. And then we have up here as a key resistance. Now, in order for an uptrend to resume, kind of like what we saw from over here, but mainly what we saw from over here, this aggressive uptrend in tech and just the overall market in general, 470.45 will have to break. Until this level breaks, no matter how long it takes, we will not see another one of these uptrends or aggressive uptrends for that matter, because we have now entered a new range status on QQQ. So I just wanted to share that and you can mark it on your chart, but it's going to remain within this box until either end breaks, whether 470 breaks in the future and we see more upside or whether 444 breaks and the 200 day breaks and we see a ton more downside off of that. Until that happens, we're going to see this trade within the range. So until either of these happen, you're going to expect there to be more choppy price action, first of all. And then second of all, just a lot more back and forth, even on the daily candle, not even chop intraday, uh, more so just up and down, up and down, kind of like this within the range. It's still a 20 to 25 point range, so it's very tradable, thankfully. It's not like over here where a lot of choppiness on a daily candle basis. Uh, but in this case here, we're going to see a lot of back and forth within this range until either end breaks. So I just wanted to share that uh, so you can kind of expect that coming up here in the future. So uh, this is my plan, at least for QQQ, around here, long area of interest. I'm not looking for all-time highs just because of this substantial downside move we had uh, last week. But I am looking for some type of a bounce from around this range. And again, if at any point whether it happens this week, next week, next month, or whatever. Again, it's not my base case, but if at any point we do get below the 200-day, then that's something that is a major shift in trend, and it hasn't happened for a couple years now, so very significant if that were to take place. So that's my plan on that, and then also want to reference some of the flow we saw from last week. And actually, first of all, I'll reference dark pools because if you remember in the last video, there was a ton of dark pool prints on the S&P 500 up here around the end of day on August 30th. Now, some of that was end of month rebalancing, but it was still a very substantial amount of prints. Well, now we know that was a lot of sell pressure. At the time, it looked like there was a potential for a breakout, uh, plus we had dark pools to back it, but now it seems like there's a lot of sell pressure. And you might be asking, well, if you don't know what side those orders were being executed on, and you assumed just based on 
uh, what you were looking for for that breakout that it was a lot of buying, then how can anybody use it in an actual sense? And this is why I reference this range from up here because yeah, we don't know the intent of a dark pool order. That's one of the main reasons, if not the main reason why uh, we, there are dark pool exchanges out there is to mask the intent as well as provide extra liquidity, etc., to these institutions. But in this case here, we know that there's a range and we know that there's a ton of dark pool activity that happened near end of month, especially these last three days, mainly the last day, but the last three days as well. Well, if we know that, we know that there's likely going to be a large move that occurs soon. And that pairs very nicely with the technicals in this case, because we know that there's a range, like I said earlier in the video, and if that range breaks to either direction, like I said in last week's video, we're going to see a trend move in that direction. So I can have a bias of it breaking out to the upside above 563.59, but until that happens, we're still range bound, and it could keep consolidating for a while. We could keep seeing it stay in between here for a long time. We've seen that before. It could decide to go straight away, gap up and continue up, or in this case here, the absolute inverse could happen. We could have a breakdown and confirmation under. So there's many potential scenarios in that case, but what we do know is that once that range breaks and whatever direction it decides to break, there's going to be some type of a trend move off of that. And that's exactly what we saw here. We saw a break to the downside, confirmation on this daily candle, and then a lot further afterwards. So as dark pools relate to that, we did see an uptick again to end the last week. So the S&P 500 here, 810 million, 486 million. Both of these were after hours. If we look at the dark pool levels feature here on Cheddar Flow, we can see as well 1.5 billion, not too crazy for signature dark pool prints, but still this is an uptick compared to early August. August barely at any in terms of overall dark pool prints. So that's why we weren't really referencing them in the videos. Uh, and you probably didn't see many posts on Twitter because there just weren't many uh, of these prints, but we're starting to see them pick up again going into September. So 1 billion over here, 1.1 billion worth at 540 for both of those. So that happened after hours. It's good to see some interest around this range because remember, this is very supportive. We need this to hold in order for there to be any type of bid. Otherwise, it's going to drop a lot further, like I said earlier in the video. So I'm looking for more dark pool activity around this three point range on this B500. You could even consider it to be a five point range all the way down to 535 would like to see that continue to be the theme as that could promote support around here institutional interest in buying this dip uh, and that'd be a safer sign for bulls as well so that's my thoughts on the dark bulls last thing i want to mention in today's video microsoft is retesting a very critical demand zone so i'm watching this uh, for this week because this demand zone has remained pretty consistent for a long time really since all the way back in January of this year. So quite a while. And every time it's retested, so this is the first time over here. So one, two, three, four, you could consider this to be four, and then five, and then six over here. Six times it's been retested and six times it was successful in upside continuation after. So this is now the seventh time that is retesting. And in order for this to be successful, it needs to hold above the lower end in this case. That tells me that there's amazing risk reward here. So I will be watching this one. I want to first see how the week starts off, especially after all the weight from last week. But 400, 401, not bad in terms of a long possibility here. At least that's what I'll be interested in. And it needs to hold above roughly 397 in order to remain valid. So it's about four to five bucks of risk for a lot more potential reward, I'm talking like 512-ish. Um, on that. So this is a setup that I'm interested in. A lot of the other MAG7 didn't look the best when I looked at them this weekend, but out of all the MAG7, this is the most supportive area. So Microsoft would be my top pick for the week. No notable flow that I saw though, at least based on Friday, you can see here just really nothing. It's about junk. Uh, so I would like to see a compliment based on flow. Uh, we'll see if that takes place. But main purpose of this week is seeing this range hold on SB100 as well as the similar one on QQQ. Regardless, see you guys in the next video.